When people think of private military contractors, they imagine Blackwater Security Consulting in Iraq circa 2007. However, the market for force has moved on. Firms like Blackwater are quaint compared to the Wagner Group and other contemporary mercenaries. Curiously, this trend is overlooked by scholars, the mainstream media, and the intelligence community. Consequently, there is a dangerous lacuna of understanding concerning this emerging threat. Private force has become big business and global in scope. No one truly knows how many billions of dollars slosh around this illicit market. All we know is that business is booming. Recent years have seen major mercenary activity in Yemen, Nigeria, Ukraine, Syria, and Iraq. Many of these for-profit warriors outclass local military, and a few can even stand up to America's most elite forces, as the battle in Syria shows. The Middle East is awash in mercenaries. Kurdistan is a haven for soldiers of fortune looking for work with the Kurdish militia, and oil companies defending their oil fields, or those who want terrorists dead. Some are just adventure seekers, while others are American veterans who found civilian life meaningless. The capital of Kurdistan, Erbil, has become an unofficial marketplace of mercenary services reminiscent of the Tatooine bar in the movie Star Wars, full of smugglers and guns for hire. The United Arab Emirates secretly dispatched hundreds of special forces mercenaries to fight the Iranian-backed Houthis in Yemen. Hailing from Latin American countries like Colombia, Panama, El Salvador, and Chile, they were all tough veterans of the drug wars, bringing new tactics and toughness to Middle East conflicts. They were a bargain, costing a fraction of what an American or British mercenary would charge, so the Emirates hired 1,800 of them, paying two to four times their old salaries. Allegedly, African mercenaries are also fighting in Yemen for Saudi Arabia and come from countries like Sudan, Chad, and Eritrea private force has proved a useful option for wealthy Arab nations, particularly Saudi Arabia, Qatar, and the Emirates that want to wage war but do not have an aggressive military. Their mercenaries have fought in Yemen, Syria, and Libya in recent years, turning profit motive into a war strategy. For example, Syria rewards mercenaries who seize territory from terrorists with oil and mining rights. At least two Russian companies have received contracts under this policy, Evropolis and Stroytranskaz. These oil and mining firms then hired mercenaries to do the dirty work. For example, Evropolis employed the Wagner Group to capture oil fields from the so-called Islamic State in central Syria, which it did. Reports show there are about 2,500 Russia-bought mercenaries in Syria. Russia also uses them in Ukraine, and the Ukrainians fight back with their own mercenaries. The war there is awash in Russian, Chechen, French, Spanish, Swedish, and Serbian mercenaries fighting for both sides in eastern Ukraine's bloody conflict. Mercenaries were ubiquitous in the Ukraine conflict. Companies like the Wagner Group conducted a wide range of secret missions, all denied by the Russian government. Ukrainian oligarchs hired mercenaries too, but not for the country's sake. Billionaire Igor Kolomoisky employed private warriors to capture the headquarters of oil company Ucker Trans Nafta in order to protect his financial assets. Also in Africa, there is Nigeria who secretly hired mercenaries to solve a big problem, Boko Haram. This Islamic terrorist group fights to carve out a caliphate in Nigeria, and the Nigerian army fights back, its methods no better. There is a saying in Africa, when elephants fight, the grass gets trampled. Tens of thousands of people were killed, and 2.3 million more were displaced from their homes. Boko Haram abducted 276 schoolgirls for wives, many of whom were never seen again. International outrage was swift but impotent. That's when the Nigerian government secretly turned to mercenaries to fight Boko Haram. These were not the lone gunmen of B-grade movies, but a real private army. They arrived with special forces teams in Mi-24 Hind helicopter gunships. Conducting search and destroy missions, they drove out Boko Haram in a few weeks. The Nigerian military could not achieve this task in six years. Some wonder if we should hire mercenaries to hunt and kill terrorists in the Middle East, given the slow progress of national armies and United Nations absenteeism. Even terrorists hire mercenaries. Malhama Tactical is based in Uzbekistan, and they only work for jihadi extremists. Malhama's hired guns are all sunny, but not all are not ideological like their clients. Their services are standard for today's market, functioning as military trainers, arms dealers, or elite warriors. Most of their work is in Syria for Nusra Front, an Al-Qaeda-affiliated terrorist group, and the Turkestan Islamic Party, the Syrian branch of a Uyghur extremist group based in China. In the future, jihadis may hire mercenary special forces for precision terrorist attacks. 
If terrorists can hire mercenaries, why not humanitarians? Non-governmental organizations such as CARE, Save the Children, Caritas, and World Vision are increasingly turning to the private sector to protect their people, property, and interests in conflict zones. Large military companies like Aegis Defense Services and Triple Canopy advertise their services to NGOs and NGO trade associations like the European Interagency Security Forum. The option of private peacekeepers versus none at all, which is the condition in many parts of the world today, is a Hobson's choice. What's to stop a millionaire from buying a humanitarian intervention in the future? Stopping atrocities would leave quite the legacy. Actress Mia Farrow considered hiring Blackwater to end the genocide in Darfur in 2008. Multinational corporations are the biggest new clients of mercenaries, especially the extractive industries. Companies working in dangerous places are tired of relying on corrupt or inept security forces provided to them by host governments, and they are turning to private force. For example, mining giant Freeport McMoRan employed Triple Canopy to protect its vast mine in Papua, Indonesia, where there is an insurgency. The China National Petroleum Corporation contracts DEWE security to safeguard its assets in the middle of South Sudan's civil war. Someday ExxonMobil or Google may hire an army, too. There are mercenaries on the sea as well, similar to privateers two centuries ago. International shipping lines hire them to protect their ships traveling through pirate waters in the Gulf of Aden, Strait of Malacca, and Gulf of Guinea. Here's how it works. Armed contractors sit on arsenal ships in pirate waters and chopper to a client freighter or tanker when called. Once aboard, they act as embarked security, hardening the ship with razor wire and protecting it with high-caliber firepower. After the ship passes through pirate waters, the team returns to its arsenal ship and awaits the next client. The industry is based in London and seeks legitimacy through ISO 28007 certification. Some would like to see true privateers, private naval vessels that could hunt and kill pirates. Americans will be pleased to know that Congress is authorized to hire privateers under Article 1, Section 8 of the U.S. Constitution, and this could prove more efficient than sending Arleigh Burke class destroyers after pirate zodiacs. There are even mercenaries in cyberspace called hackback companies. These computer companies attack hackers or hack back those who assail their clients' networks. Hackback companies cannot undo the damage of a network breach, but that is not the point. They serve as a deterrent. If hackers are choosing targets and they know that one company has a hackback company behind it and the other does not, they select the softer target. Also known as active defense, this practice is currently illegal in many countries including the United States, but some are questioning this edict since the National Security Agency offers scant protection for non-governmental entities. For example, the WannaCry ransomware attack in May 2017 infected more than 230,000 computers in over 150 countries. Victims included the United Kingdom's National Health Service, Spain's Telefonica, Germany's Deutsche Bahn, and U.S. companies like Federal Express. If countries cannot protect their people and organizations from cyber attack, then why not allow them to protect themselves? Private force is manifesting everywhere. After 150 years underground, the market for force is returning in just a few decades and is growing at an alarming rate. In military strategy, there are five domains of war, land, sea, air, space, and cyber. In less than 20 years, private force has proliferated among every domain except space, but that too may change. Space is already privatized with companies like SpaceX, and it is possible that private armed satellites may one day orbit the Earth. Worse things are to come. In just 15 years, the market for force has moved beyond Blackwater in Iraq and become more lethal. Mercenaries are appearing everywhere, and no longer just in the fringe. Contract warfare has become a new way of warfare, resurrected by the United States and imitated by others. The rise of mercenaries is producing a new kind of threat, private war, that threatens chaos. It is literally the marketization of war, where military force is bought and sold like any other commodity. It is an ancient form of armed conflict that modern militaries have forgotten how to fight. Should this trend develop, the super-rich could become superpowers, leading to wars without states. In such a world, states would be mere prizes to be won rather than agents of their own destiny. This has the potential to upend international relations as we know it. If you like the video give it a thumbs up and subscribe.